Hey, this is Corndog with the Bantha Crew. I just want to show off my 4-0 deck list for Blue Han. I think this deck is very good. I think Han is probably the most underrated leader in the game right now. And being able to go up on resources, especially turn one, is so huge. I chose to use Security Complex. I like its epic action. Um, a lot of the times you're getting out quicker than your opponent. So having the five extra health. I mean, I'll toy around with the other base, but giving a shield to your big units, especially your early units that you play, it's kind of a big deal. So that's why I chose Security Complex. I'm gonna go right into the units. I chose to play three Greedo. I think this card's fantastic. Um, your turn one play, especially against an early meta or a, an aggressive meta, in Sabine or any other type of deck that's wanting to play early, that three attack stat is really where it's at. Having a two attacker um, in the early games, not being able to defeat a Battlefield Marine per se, I, I just can't see that in this meta right now. So having three as a starting baseline, except for one card in my deck, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit later, but his defeat ability, when defeated, you reveal or you discard the top card of your deck. If it's not a unit, you can deal two damage to another ground unit, which is really good. So this card, fantastic. Um, highly recommend playing this one at three. Next up, we have Restored Arc. This one also happens to be two, but it's a space unit, so you can sort of get away with it. It doesn't defeat an A-Wing, but having the Restore on this card is very nice. It also happens to be a Rebel card, so it synergizes nicely with other cards in this deck. So that's going to be a 2-drop. My last for the 2-drop units is going to be Lothal Insurgent. I think this card's really good. Um, it's a 3-2. Like I was saying, you want cards at this level to be a three power um, to be able to stabilize the game early or to push that extra damage. And its ability actually comes in handy sometimes. Um, being able to play a Grio into this is pretty nice. You get Your opponent has to draw a card and then discard a random card from their hand. So that can really mess with your what your opponent's going to do. Next up, is the most important part of the deck is that's your three drop spot. And that's normally what I'm wanting to play turn one. Um, Ezra, having a three, four body, um, not being, being able to trade up, you can attack into a battlefield Marine and this will still survive. Plus this card is really good in a Han deck. You're, emptying out your hand quite a lot. So having the extra ability to play a card from the top of your deck is great. It also helps set up a card that I'm gonna go over later on in the deck. So Ezra Brizzer, three. Also at three, Millennium Falcon. Um, with Han Solo, you're not having the initiative hardly ever. So if even if you go second, that's not a bad thing on turn one because if they play a space unit, like an A-Wing, you can immediately follow up with Han's ability, they claim Millennium Falcon, and get rid of it. And what's so great about this card is it's it's made for Han because you can use the resource that you defeat with Han to pay for the Millennium Falcon. This card's just great. Um, being able to attack, if you wanna, if you're playing against Control, playing against Iden or a Krennic deck, you can go ahead and drop this turn one and hit for three, and it's just, it does so much work. Next up, we've got Wing Leader. Um, Wing Leader, fantastic. I run it at three. Um, yeah, like I said, if you play Restored Arc into Wing Leader, fantastic play. Or just buffing an Ezra, anything like that. So I'm also playing Yoda. I was sort of on the fence about this one because like I said, it only has two power, but being able to play it on turn one is nice. It does have the restore two. Also on defeat, you can choose to draw a card, which you'll always do. And that really helps with Han. 
Uh, next up, we have a three of Fleet Lieutenant. This card just helps you in the control matchup, basically. So you can push out damage fairly quickly. Another all-star, Kanan. This card is really good. You can play it as early as turn two with Han Solo. The healing ability on this card, fantastic. It's force and it's a rebel, which is, it's just really key. Next up, General Dodonna. This card is really good. Having a 4-4 body is excellent because not a lot of things trade into this. If you're playing against, say, a Krennic deck uh, with some Scout Bikers, Pursuers, this card's really good. It's just a wall and it buffs up your other Rebels. Namely, Restored Art can trade into A-Wings and things like that. So I really like this card. I think it doesn't see enough play. Next up, we have three of Chewbacca. It's a Sentinel. When it gets hit, you ready him. He's a 3-6. You can play him uh, pretty early in Han or just play him on curve, and he's fantastic. Next up, I chose to only play two Obi-Wan. Um, he's pretty good. You do have force cards in this deck. You have the Yoda, you have Ezra Bridger, and you have Kanan. So his when defeated ability is nice, um, but you're really wanting to get to, to sevens in this deck because this deck plays sevens so easily. And I'll show you why in a second. So with Han's ability, when you're on your five resource turn, you use the action, place down a card. Now you're at six resources. He comes out at six, you play him. Then if he survives, you can attack, add another resource and boom, you're already at seven resources whenever you started the round with five. So you basically get to skip from five to seven. So that's why seven is a sweet spot in this deck. And you're definitely wanting to play three Luke Skywalker. This card is the all-star of the deck. Restore three, so powerful, six, seven. He's got more attack than Darth Vader unit. Um, the win played ability, a lot of the times you're gonna get the minus six, minus six. You can set it up easily just by yourself to get the minus six, minus six. Minus three is good as well, but having that ability on this card is is so fantastic. I really like Luke Skywalker. I think he is just one of the best legendaries. Uh, another one, Han Solo. I'm running three of them. He's really good. Um, he's got ambush, and when you attack something, he doesn't take damage when he's attacking. So, you know, you play him out, pop something, he takes no damage. So that's really nice. And then I'm also playing one Redemption. Um, I'm on the fence on this card. It's pretty good, but I haven't played it yet. I didn't play it in the tournament, so it's just kind of there. Next up, we have You Are My Only Hope. Once you get to five resources, um, you can play anything in your deck aside from Redemption. Basically, if there's a seven on top, um, this card's just, it's really good because you can set it up with Ezra Bridger because um, you can leave this card on top of your deck and then you know exactly what's there. So this card and Ezra is really nice. Then I play a one of Jedi lightsaber. Um, this isn't a card you want to see three of in your hand, but seeing one of is nice because you do run force units. You run Yoda, Ezra, and Kanan. So I really like this card. It helps push for extra damage and the minus two, minus two ability is really nice. Then I play two of Wele. This card's really good when they just dropped a wing leader and you can bounce something to their hand, uh, get rid of the experience tokens, or just slow a deck down a turn. So this card's pretty good. And rounding out the events, I run two takedown. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, defeat a unit with five or less remaining health. 
All right, onto the sideboard. I run a one of Vanquish. Um, bring this in against Boba, decks that are just playing bigger things. Three of System Patrol Craft. Um, this card is for four, you get Sentinel. It's kind of the reason you would play like a Bright Hope. It's to stall out um, the space space game. So if you're playing against Sabine, you can drop this as early as turn two with Han and stall out their um, space front. Then we've got four of Spark of the Rebellion. This card costs two, lets you discard any card from your opponent's hand. And you get to look at their hand, obviously. Um, I'll bring this in against Control, get rid of their big ships, late game, or any kind of control card they may have to defeat one of my units. Last but not least, we have Change of Heart. This really helps give you that extra push in the late game, stealing a um, Boa Fett ship, a very large, stealing a Devastator, anything, anything like that. Even smaller things late game that can you know, help you push for more damage. And yep, if there was anything to change or tweak, I might think about um, changing out the Yoda for um, some of the other yellow cards or running a different suite of events in this deck. But other than that, I think this is a really solid deck. And yeah, thanks. Check out uh, Bantha Crew for more content.